In this video, I start off with the strongest sword in the game, the Zenith. However, the weapon's damage, crit chance, attack speed, and penetration have all been reduced, making it no better than a wooden sword. To improve and level up the stats, I'll have to attack monsters to gain experience. Will I be able to bring back Zenith to its former glory, or perhaps make it even better than before? Stay tuned to find out. Alright, so I have the strongest weapon in the game right from the get-go. However, it has lost most, if not all, of its strengths such as damage, crit chance, attack speed, and penetration. The additional projectiles I'll talk about later, but for now, this weapon is basically a pile of poop. In order to make the Zenith grow stronger, I'll have to start dealing damage to enemies. The more the merrier. Each point of damage will translate into experience, so for example, if I dealt 7 damage to a monster, I would then gain 7 points of experience. I figured that leveling up my attack speed first would be the best choice of action because this thing swung like an 80 year old grandpa, but yeah, the faster I attack, the faster I could gain experience. After chopping down trees for wood, I went underground to do some mining and also make my zenith stronger because there's a lot more monsters that spawn in caves rather than on the surface. After killing an undead miner, I got really lucky since it dropped the bone pickaxe, which is going to save a lot of time while mining. A while later, I was finally able to level up my attack speed to the first level from dealing 700 points of damage. It might not be a big change, but you can definitely tell it has sped up by a bit, and with each level up, the amount of experience needed gets progressively larger, so it now takes 770 points to level up. I then found a pair of shoe spikes that increases my crit chance, and if you guys didn't know, dealing crit damage which usually results in 2 times the damage does count towards experience gained, so finding more accessories with crit modifiers would be ideal. I then went on to find more life crystals and ores. Soon after, I encountered a crawler that somehow made it through that tiny crack and attacking with the zenith pushed it towards me so I ended up dying. After respawning, I saw that it was nearing dusk so I built a small house with some chests to store some of my items away. I had enough sapphire so I crafted a hook along with a full set of silver armor. I built a few NPC houses and then made my way back down to find some more accessories. I did find a bunch of them except they were all shoe spikes, so I had a total of 4 which was ridiculous. Like seriously, out of all the accessories out there, I kept getting these stupid shoe spikes. But after entering the jungle, my unluckiness ended because I finally found something other than the shoe spikes which was Hermes boots, along with a few more life crystals to max out my health. At this point, my attack speed was up to level 5, and as you can tell, it is noticeably much faster now, so getting experience is becoming a lot easier. I found a cloud in a bottle and the band of regeneration that increases my crit chance with a gravitation potion and the suspicious looking eye to summon the eye of Cthulhu. Later I found a sharpening station that increases my armor penetration. Dealing damage to monsters with higher armor would only do about 2-3 damage but now having this I can deal around 6-8 to eight damage which is going to speed up experience gain even further and the best part is that once I click on the station it gives a permanent buff duration until I die, unlike the temporary 10 minute duration from before. I kept attacking, killing monsters in the jungle until my attack speed was at level 10. It was attacking at a speed that I was satisfied with, so now it's time to switch over to start leveling the penetration. I can only attack one monster at a time right now, but with each level increases the number of hits I can do until my weapon resets. The base experience needed is 1750, which is much more than leveling up the attack speed. But my weapon swings at a much faster pace, it didn't take very long to level it up. Once it reached level 1, I can now deal damage twice, which meant twice as fast to progress. But because penetration is so good, the experience needed for the next level is almost doubled, to about 3000 experience needed. I stayed underground until I reached level 3 for penetration, and then teleported home because now I was ready to take on my first boss, the Eye of Cthulhu. But seeing that it was already nearing dawn, I decided to wait until the next night. In the meantime, I went back into the jungle to level up my attack speed even further until it got to the point where I was able to swing it consecutively without rest, which was at level 15. Now having gained back the original speed of Zenith, I stopped and began building an arena to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. After I was finished with that, I drank the gravitation potion to search for some sky islands. I got myself the lucky horseshoe and the shiny red balloon. 
Now before I summon the Eye of Cthulhu, I switched over to level up my damage because a 7 damage zenith isn't too appealing and having 2 suspicious looking eyes with the boss having over 3000 health, I'd be able to get a few levels in. This fight was no trouble at all. Every time the servants were summoned, they get instantly killed so thank god I leveled up penetration before this. After defeating the Eye of Cthulhu, I summoned and killed it once more for experience and at the end of it, my damage was at level 4, with the Zenith having 11 damage total. Afterwards, I went down the Corruption, breaking some Shadow Orbs to summon the Eater of Worlds, and with this boss having a huge health pool, I was going to gain a lot of experience. After destroying the last Shadow Orb, the boss appeared and I really expected to absolutely shred this thing having only level 3 penetration, the number of hits I did was limited. But while fighting this boss, the experience I was gaining was going through the roof because at the end of it, I had gained 6 levels to damage, bringing the zenith to 17 damage. I went back home and crafted a few pieces of shadow armor along with the nightmare pickaxe. I didn't have enough to craft the full set, but each piece gives 5% critical chance so it was very necessary to craft every single piece of armor. I broke 3 more shadow orbs to kill the boss once more. Now having enough materials, I crafted these shadow greaves to complete the set. With all pieces equipped, my crit chance was boosted up to 27%. Next up is Skeletron, so I went to the dungeon, began building the arena, and then waited until it was night. I then talked to the old man to summon the boss. Destroying the hands of Skeletron went by pretty quickly and all that's left was the head. Once Skeletron was defeated, I checked the damage on the Zenith and it had risen by another 5 levels that brings it to 22 melee damage. I went down the dungeon and opened a gold chest to receive the Cobalt Shield. Now all that's left is to take on the Wall of Flesh, so I began mining towards Hell. After reaching Hell, I mined some Hellstone, but not a lot since the only thing I was going to make was the Molten Pickaxe. I thought about crafting the Molten Armor for increased melee damage, but my Zenith doesn't have much damage to begin with, so the change from equipping the armor wouldn't have changed much, and I'd much rather have more crit chance. I crafted the Hellstone Pickaxe, but I wasn't going to take on the Wall of Flesh just yet because I really wanted to combine some of my accessories together. So I went to the left side of the world to kill Goblin Scouts for their tattered cloths to craft the Goblin Battle Standard, which is an item that manually summons the Goblin Army. After defeating the army, I went underground to search for the Tinkerer. After 30 minutes later, I finally found him, so I purchased Rocky Boots and the Workshop from him. I also reforged the Zenith until I got the Godly Modifier on it because it was so cheap, it only costed less than a gold to reforge. I crafted Spectre Boots and the Lucky Horseshoe Balloon. I thought I leveled up my damage a pretty decent amount, so I switched over to the crit chance now. I was all prepared, so I went back down to hell threw in the voodoo doll to summon the boss and this fight took no longer than a minute to beat since the zenith is able to hit all parts at the same time. After the wall of flesh was defeated, I checked my crit chance and it has now increased by 4%, bringing the total to 39%. That's a pretty high chance of critting, especially considering how fast my zenith attacks. Now that I'm in hard mode, I broke some demon altars in the corruption, spawning in palladium, mithril, and titanium. Before I went down to mine the hard mode ores, I switched over to start leveling the additional projectiles because I was very curious as to what this does. I initially thought it added the many different sorts into the attack such as the Muramasa, Volcano, Star Fury, etc. 
but after leveling it once, it added another zenith into my attack, so I'm swinging out two zeniths at the same time. I thought that maybe this was a little too busted, so after reaching level 2, I switched back over to damage. I then mined a bunch of titanium to craft the full titanium armor. I'm almost ready to take on the mechanical bosses, but I just needed one more item, which were wings, so I went up to a sky island and killed some wyverns for their souls of flight. Once I collected enough souls, I needed some feathers, but after killing just a few harpies, a giant harpy feather dropped, so instead of crafting the usual angel and demon wings, I crafted harpy wings. Now with wings, I was ready for the bosses. The first mechanical boss I summoned were the twins. Nothing too special, just the usual targeting the spasmatasm first, and then finishing off the retinazer. After the twins were defeated, I summoned Skeletron Prime and I made sure to distribute damage equally to maximize experience gained. After defeating Skeletron Prime, the last mechanical boss to fight was the Destroyer, and seeing that I'm only midway through the night, I decided to summon it. Now this boss gave the most experience because it has the highest health pool out of the other two bosses. After destroying the destroyer, I checked my zenith and saw that my penetration level was at level 9 which was insane. This meant I can hit enemies up to 9 times before resetting. Now that all mechanical bosses are defeated, I crafted the pickaxe axe and full hollowed armor and then went to the jungle to find the plantera bulb. After a long and grueling 30 minutes which felt like hours, I finally found the bulb. I blew up an area with some dynamite to build the arena in, and once I finished that, I broke the bulb to begin the fight. What surprised me was that it took way longer than I expected to beat this boss considering the fact that I'm attacking with 3 zenits with high crit chance and penetration. Right after Plantera was defeated, I made my way right into the temple to summon the next boss, Golem. Now this boss was perfect for racking up as much experience as possible because it had a decent amount of health and I had a bunch of power cells to summon it multiple times, so I stayed in the temple until I ran out of summons. While I was in the temple, I also figured it was the perfect opportunity to level up stats such as the attack speed again. The experience needed to level it up was very little so after smacking gold a few times, the zenith started going crazy. And when I say crazy, I mean crazy. I was attacking so fast that I was swinging out what looked like to be over 10 zeniths, even though the stats for additional projectiles was still at level 2. When I saw all of this, I decided to stop because I got really scared that if my attacks got too high, the game would break or something along the lines of that. I switched over to damage and fought Golem a few more times and it looked something like this. Afterwards I went to the dungeon to summon the lunatic cultist. And you guys can pretty much guess what will happen. Yeah, I kind of got absolutely destroyed in a matter of seconds. 
Now comes the Celestial Pillars. And, well, having a weapon that reaches through every side of the screen made things go by so smoothly. I didn't have to worry about enemies getting close to me, and killing monsters to break the barrier became a lot faster. After destroying all four pillars, it was now time to face off against the final boss, Moonlord. The most exciting, anticipated fight that you're about to- Oh. I'm just kidding guys, it didn't end that quickly. Here's how it really went down. Alright, that's going to be it guys, thanks for watching. If you guys want to check out this mod for yourselves, it will be in the description below. This mod was very fun and interesting to play, I definitely am curious to see what would happen if I level up my attack speed and additional projectiles even more, but I'll leave that up to you guys to find out. If you've enjoyed watching, don't forget to leave a like, comment on what other mods I should try out, and also subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Peace.